Oh, wow. These were the words Steve Jobs repeated three times after taking a long look at his family. The fact that Jobs was surrounded by family was nothing short of a miracle. He was isolated growing up and only found his biological family later in life. Jobs was born to a Syrian immigrant and a college student from Wisconsin in 1955. They were ill-equipped to care for him, so they immediately put him up for adoption. His adoptive parents were deeply religious people from rural Wisconsin, but they soon relocated to San Francisco. Jobs didn't learn until later he had another biological sister. They met after he had already begun work at the company that would bring him more fame and fortune than anyone in the tech world, Apple. By the time of Jobs' death in 2011, he had amassed a technology empire that still persists to this day. Never one to mince words, Tupac had a special message for the first responder who found him after he was shot. Fuck you. The legendary rapper was gunned down in front of the MGM Grand in Las Vegas in 1996. As Chris Carroll, the first responder, explains, he was desperately trying to communicate who shot him before giving up and forcing out his final syllables. One of the most central figures in West Coast rap, Shakur is still one of the best-selling rappers of all time. Though he was only 25 years old at the time of his death, Shakur produced seven albums that achieved platinum status, five of which were released posthumously. I'm going to go and see Jesus. On Friday, the evening before she was found dead in her room at a Hollywood hotel, she performed a sweet, heartfelt version of Jesus Loves Me at the True Nightclub in Hollywood. There, she told friends she had a feeling the end was near. The R&B innovator was only 48 years old when she accidentally drowned in her bathtub. One of the best-selling artists of all time, Houston sold more than 200 million albums in her lifetime. The New Jersey native is considered one of the most influential singers in R&B to this day. God bless. Take care of my boy, Roy. These were Stan Lee's last words as he finally succumbed to a bad case of pneumonia. He left behind an incredible legacy. Lee was perhaps the single greatest influence on modern comics. As a young man, he rose through the ranks of the then-boutique comic publisher Marvel to become creative director and invented such classic characters as Spider-Man, the X-Men, Iron Man, Thor, and the Hulk. At the ripe old age of 95, Lee knew he didn't have long to live. In his final hours, he passed the torch to his protege, Roy Thomas, entrusting him with his work and his legacy. Michael Jackson's final words were simply, more milk. While this might sound like an absurd request from such a legendary musician, the truth is milk was his alleged nickname for propofol, the powerful hospital anesthetic the singer overdosed on the day he died. Jackson left behind a pile of superlatives. He was one of the best-selling artists of all time, moving more than 350 million records. And his album Thriller remains the best-selling album of all time, with estimated sales around 66 million. Unfortunately, Jackson's final years were plagued by addiction and instability before he finally succumbed to an overdose. JFK's final words were actually a response to a statement made by his friend Nellie Connolly. While driving through Dallas, she commented, You certainly can't say Dallas doesn't love you, Mr. President. His response? No, you certainly can't. Moments later, he was gunned down in broad daylight in one of the most infamous murders in American history. A graduate of both Harvard and the Naval Reserve, Kennedy was beloved by many people around the world for his progressive politics and support of civil rights. I'm shot. This was all John Lennon could utter before he lost consciousness after being shot in front of his residence at the Dakota Hotel in New York City. The perpetrator was Mark David Chapman, whom Lennon had just signed a record for moments earlier. Chapman remained on the scene reading J.D. Salinger's The Catcher in the Rye until he was arrested by police. He planned to cite the novel as his manifesto. This tragedy was felt all over the world, as Lennon helped create some of the world's most memorable music with the Beatles. Money can't buy life. These were fitting last words for a man who spent his life fighting the patterns of commercialism and hypocrisy he saw in the world. And arguably the most famous reggae musician of all time, the Jamaican-born singer sold more than 75 million records in his lifetime. In the end, Marley died of a malignant melanoma that he refused to have treated because of his religion. On his deathbed, he had an epiphany about the vice of greed that he passed on to his son, Ziggy. As Benjamin Franklin lay dying at the age of 84, his daughter told him to change position in bed so he could breathe more easily. Franklin's last words were, a dying man can do nothing easy. Benjamin Franklin is best known as one of the founding fathers who drafted the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States. He is still considered instrumental in the foundation of the United States. What could be more fitting for the whiskey tycoon than his final words? One last drink, please. The Tennessee native died of blood poisoning after kicking a safe in frustration because he couldn't remember the combination. Though he barely made it to 60 years old, Jack Daniels is one of the most infamous distilleries in American history and is behind one of the most recognizable alcohol brands to this day. This legendary composer actually had the wherewithal in his final moments to craft a sentence in Latin. Beethoven's last words were Plaudite amici commedia finita est. Friends, applaud. The comedy is over. His statement came after years of misery. Beethoven suffered from deafness, cirrhosis of liver, possibly venereal disease. He struggled with alcohol addiction, but nonetheless his music has endured the centuries and is instantly recognizable to current generations. 
Former President George H.W. Bush spoke his final words in a phone call with his son, former President George W. Bush. In their conversation on speakerphone, the son told the senior George Bush that he had been a wonderful father. His father's reply and final words were, I love you too. President from 1989 until 1993, George H.W. Bush was famous for his international policy work and tenure as the CIA director. Elvis' final words were just as embarrassing as his death. I'm going to the bathroom to read. Those were the words Elvis Presley said to his fiancée Ginger Alden early in the morning of August 16, 1977, at his Memphis mansion, Graceland. Presley was found dead on the toilet nearly an hour later by a horrified Alden. Born on January 8, 1935 in Tupelo, Mississippi, Elvis Presley came from very humble beginnings and grew up to become one of the biggest names in rock and roll. By the mid-1950s, he'd appeared on the radio, television, and the silver screen. On August 16, 1977, at age 42, he died of heart failure, which was related to his drug addiction. Since his death, Presley Presley has remained one of the world's most popular music icons. Frank Sinatra was lucid enough in his final moments to know that he was passing away. His final words? I'm losing it. He said this to his wife, who sat with him at his bedside. Sinatra was a singer and actor, who through a long career and a very public personal life became one of the most sought-after performers in the entertainment industry. He is often hailed as the greatest American singer of 20th century popular music. Many still consider him synonymous with the crooner genre, and he still has numerous best-selling albums, including his Christmas album. Though no one knows exactly what Cobain's final words were, they did recover his suicide note, which first quoted Neil Young, stating, It's better to burn out than fade away. The next line was aimed at his wife and daughter. Simply, I love you. I love you. The Washington native is easily the most iconic musician from the 90s grunge movement and is credited with making punk music commercially viable. He took his own life at the age of only 27. Anne Frank's final words are both devastating and inspiring. She said, I still believe, in spite of everything, that people are still truly good at heart. The 15-year-old was murdered at a concentration camp near Hanover in Germany during World War II. Her posthumously published diary has proven to be the single most enduring and humanizing text from the Holocaust. An optimist until the very end, she managed to see the good in people while so many others became cynical. The legendary dictator of the USSR bred such an insidious culture that in the end, he succumbed to it. His final words were, I'm finished. I don't even trust myself. Stalin was found on the ground at his home in 1953. He was moved onto a couch and remained there for three days. He was hand-fed using a spoon, given various medicines and injections, and leeches were applied to him. Nothing could rouse him from this stupor, and he died soon after. Winston Churchill had suffered a series of severe strokes in 1965. I'm so bored with it all, were his last words before slipping into a coma and dying nine days later. The famous British statesman had a legacy based on the British victory during World War II. He was highly quotable and was known for his colorful method of speaking. Some even say that he predicted his own death because he was ruminating about his demise on the day he slipped into a coma. The wallpaper and I are fighting a duel to the death. One or the other of us has to go. These are appropriate last words of the legendary Irish author Oscar Wilde. He was a popular literary figure in late Victorian England, known for his brilliant wit, flamboyant style, and infamous imprisonment for homosexuality. After graduating from Oxford University, he lectured as a poet, art critic, and a leading proponent of the principles of aestheticism. In 1891, he published The Picture of Dorian Gray, his only novel, which was panned as immoral by Victorian critics, but is now considered one of his most notable works. One of the most enduring artists said an equally timeless final sentence, Drink to me. Picasso was a Spanish painter, sculptor, printmaker, ceramicist, and stage designer, considered one of the greatest and most influential artists of the 20th century, and the co-creator along with George Brock of Cubism. He died on April 8, 1973, from pulmonary edema and heart failure, while he and his wife Jocelyn entertained friends for dinner. He remains one of the most iconic painters in history, with artworks priced among the most expensive in the world. In his last moments, Luther was asked by his friend Eustace Jonas, Do you want to die standing firm on Christ in the doctrine you have taught? He answered emphatically, yes. Luther's last words were, we are beggars. This is true. Luther was the most prominent figure in the Protestant Reformation. He is credited with challenging established church figures and helping his congregation find a more personal relationship with God. Ben, make sure you play Take My Hand, Precious Lord in the meeting tonight. Play it real pretty. These were Martin Luther King's final words as he spoke to a musician about the concert he was meant to play later that night. The civil rights activist was assassinated by an escaped convict in 1968. King was a prominent leader of the civil rights movement and a Nobel Peace Prize laureate who was known for his use of nonviolence and civil disobedience. My God, what happened? This was Princess Diana's final question as she inquired about paparazzi who had crashed their car. Tragically, she crashed into their car immediately afterward and was killed instantly. The televised funeral was watched by a British television audience that peaked at 32.10 million, which was one of the UK's highest viewing figures ever. Her sudden death at only 36 years old devastated the public, who loved her for her support of the poor and children.
I have offended God and mankind because my work did not reach the quality it should have. A notorious perfectionist, only da Vinci could look at his impressive body of work and find fault. The Italian polymath was a noted expert in invention, drawing, painting, sculpting, architecture, science, music, mathematics, engineering, literature, anatomy, geology, astronomy, botany, writing, history, and cartography. Apparently he held himself to such a high standard that even this rap sheet was not enough for him, as he died of a stroke. You too, my child? These were the tragic last words of Julius Caesar as he learned that his adoptive son Brutus was among his murderers. One of the most famous Roman politicians and generals, Caesar eventually declared himself dictator for life, a distinction that nearly every Roman ruler used from then forward. On the 15th of March 44 BC, Caesar was assassinated by a group of rebellious senators led by Gaius Cassius Longinus, Marcus Junius Brutus, and Decimus Junius Brutus, who stabbed him to death. Widely considered to be one of the most prominent figures in the Industrial Revolution, Henry Ford redefined the modern car as we know it. His introduction of the Model T automobile revolutionized transportation and American industry. As the owner of the Ford Motor Company, he became one of the richest and best-known people in the world. At the age of 83, he suffered a cerebral hemorrhage, but not before uttering his final words, I'll sleep well tonight. On May 20, 1506 in Valladolid, Spain, with his two brothers and two sons at his side, Christopher Columbus uttered his last words, Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. A deeply religious man, these words were fitting for his last moments. Columbus was famous as a colonist and a navigator. He led the first European expeditions to the Caribbean, Central America, and South America, initiating the permanent European colonization of the Americas. Alexander Graham Bell, the inventor of the telephone, had a rather tragic final message. It was actually spoken in sign language. He signed the word no to his deaf wife, who had asked him not to leave her. The Scottish-born inventor is best known for the invention of the telephone, but he was also the founder of AT&T and died an extremely wealthy man. Edison was another man of science and a noted inventor who created devices including the phonograph, the light bulb, and motion pictures. Immediately before his death, he awoke from a coma, opened his eyes, and reportedly said to his wife, it's very beautiful out there. Through his team of inventors, Edison invented numerous devices which are still in use today. Though there is some contention over whether or not the ideas were truly his, they are still credited to his workshop. All compounded things are subject to vanish. Strive with earnestness. These were the words of Siddhartha Gautama, also known as the first Buddha. The religious teacher had announced that he would die soon after falling violently ill at the age of 80. Though his final words were somewhat esoteric, they matched his lifelong pursuit of life without suffering. According to Buddhist beliefs, Buddha did not truly die, but was reborn in order to help others achieve enlightenment.